Hi YouTube and welcome to my channel. If you clicked on this video, you probably want to learn about immutable distros and if they might be a good fit for you. So we're going to answer that very question today. My name is Patrick and let's dig right in. So first we need to talk about what is an immutable distribution. Well, first of all, it's a Linux distribution, as you can probably guess by the name, but it's immutable, and what that means is that it's a version of Linux that cannot be rendered unusable due to a software issue. The idea is that there can never be a software issue that breaks the machine so badly that you can't use it, hence it is immutable. There's a few ways that immutable distributions go about achieving this, not all of them do all of these things, and not all of them do all of this in the same way, but these are just some general features and things that you might find across these immutable distributions. First off, and most importantly, immutable distributions have a read-only root file system. Uh, so this is a half-truth. Uh, in immutable distributions, the root file system is in fact read-only. We'll talk about the benefits of that in just a moment. But also, there are certain folders and directories inside the operating system that do allow you to write to them, such as var opt. Uh, just a, a couple things to keep in mind. But that's one way that these Linux distributions ensure that you always have a working system. They keep the operating system read-only. Another thing that they almost all have in common is the fact that they do snapshotting. So over time, as updates are installed, as you install new software, it's taking snapshots of the operating system so that in the event that something does go wrong, you can easily roll back. And this concept of snapshots is actually permeating even the update process and how it operates. What I mean specifically is that in most of these immutable distributions, uh, what happens is when you run updates, it makes a clone of your operating system on the disk, and then it installs the updates on the clone. And then when you restart, it starts up off the clone. And then if something goes wrong with the update, well then it has the old version of the operating system right there on the disk ready to be booted off of. So that's another way that these operating systems try to give you immutability. So with let's talk in a little bit more detail about that read-only root file system. What does that entail? Well, it means, most, most obviously, it means that you can't install software the usual way. Uh, you're not going to be able to do a sudo dnf or sudo apt, none of that. Uh, those package managers are not compatible because you cannot write to the root file system, <laughs> which is a kind of a necessity to install traditional packages. So that's addressed through the use of flat packs. Uh, flat packs are basically sandboxed Linux apps that you can install, and they contain all the binaries and everything that the application needs to run. Downside is that you have more binaries to update and more disk usage. Uh, good side is that they can be packaged up and ran on top of a read-only root file system, so you actually have some apps to play with. In fact, quite a few apps. Uh, really, almost all of my needs were met by what was in the default repos and in Flathub. Now, there were a couple pieces of software I used that I had to go hunting for a Flatpak uh, reference file on the internet. Not a big deal. That's the same story across every operating system. It's not a problem, it's just something that you should know that you're going to run into. But the read-only root file system has some very real benefits. Uh, specifically in that it limits the spread of malware across a system. Now, Linux malware on the desktop is actually quite rare. Uh, where you see Linux malware more commonly is on the server side of things, but it is something that you should be cognizant of as a Linux user, even on the desktop. Uh, but by having a read-only root file system, it means that malware can't modify system files which means that most pieces of malware just won't run. Except, you know, stuff like info stealers and low-level kind of script kitty deals like that. So, obviously, you're not going to be able to install everything that you need to use on an immutable distribution. So, how do we address the gap? 
Well, Fedora Silver Blue and Kino White and all of the Fedora Atomic family of desktops, they have a, a nice little trick built in. They come with a package called San, uh, they come with a package called Toolbox. You can enter the toolbox from the commands line, and it's basically a fresh copy of Fedora Linux, the regular old bog standard Fedora Linux, inside your terminal. And so you can run all the commands line and graphical Fedora Linux applications your heart desires. And it's all in a safe containerized system that does not change your base system. Another benefit of the read-only root file system is that everything is reproducible. So every copy of the operating system from one computer to the next is going to be exactly the same, at least in theory. So there are some ways to get around the read-only root file system. Uh, specifically, you, you do have the ability to force install D, uh, RPM packages on Fedora Silverblue and on OpenSUSE Micro OS. Am I saying that right? OpenSUSE? OpenSUSE? SUS? Sissy? Open Sissy? Open Sesame. So let me give you some practical advice from my perspective. For context, I've been running immutable Linux distributions on all of my desktops for the last three years. Except for my macOS desktop, that's basically a read-only root file system as well. But anyway, I've been using immutable distros on the desktop for the last three years. And I have some thoughts about it. Uh, first of all, your desktop environment choice really matters. If you're just going to be using GNOME and you like GNOME, then uh, yeah, this that immutable desktop is a great choice. The problem is when you run into desktop environments that assume some level of customization, like KDE, for example. There's a lot of functionality in KDE that by the nature of the op operating system is going to be broken. Like, you can't install themes because your root file system is read-only. And so there's a lot of the, the things that you would go to KDE for that just aren't available because you're running an immutable distro. So if you're a KDE fan, I don't think you should be running immutables. Another thing, another desktop environment, rather a window manager to look out for, is Sway. Uh, Fedora offers a Sway Atomic immutable operating system flavor. Uh, Sway is a beautiful window manager. It's really great the way it works. It's one of the most bigly file managers of all time. Everybody talks about what a big file manager it is. Jesus Christ, I'm having a fucking stroke. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know where I was going with it. I don't even know what I was saying. Were those words? Because I was, I just blacked out. I just started talking and it just wouldn't stop. All right, so we talked about all the differences between an immutable system and a normal system. So can an immutable system still get hacked? Uh, the answer to that's very much yes. Uh, there are plenty of ways to achieve persistence and to do nasty stuff on an operating system that do not require writing to the root file system. Uh, in, in fact, if you want to get crazy with it, there's all kinds of in-memory virus, not viruses, but in-memory pieces of malware that are available for Linux systems that don't ever write to the disk. And so the idea that your root file system being read-only makes you immune from viruses and malware is in ingenuous. It doesn't. Uh, for example, an info stealer. An info stealer needs to be able to get onto your computer and get into your browser. To do that, it needs the permission context of, of you, the current user. And in that circumstance, it's never touching the root file system. It's never writing to it. It exists completely separate from all of that. And so your, your read-only root file system is not going to protect you from every type of malware or virus. Another thing to be aware of is that there are some security implications in a negative way. Uh, you cannot easily install any EDR, XDR, or antivirus products because the root file system is read-only. Uh, you also cannot install backup agents. Now, there are ways around this stuff, right? Like, if you really want to do that. But if you're using the workarounds, then you might as well just be using a regular distro at that point. 
Which brings me to the, my final question that I'm going to help you answer. Should you be using a immutable desktop? And to that, I have to say, you should try. Like, you should give it a shot. Uh, I definitely think that it's a good thing to experience. And who knows, you might really like it, just like I do. Uh, however, if it, let me put a heavy asterisk on that, because there's more. There's more to it. Uh, if you're a GNOME user, GNOME, you're going to be right at home. Uh, just sit down, take it to the dome. But GNOME, GNOME users are going to be perfectly happy in an immutable desktop, as long as they don't need any of the uh, functionality that just doesn't exist on them. <laughs> yeah, just use the thing if you can. Wow, YouTuber advice. That it's brilliant. But if you here's how you can in seriousness, here's how you can actually decide if you should run an immutable desktop. Write down the five top things you want to do with your computer. And then figure out if you can do those things on an immutable desktop in like a virtual machine or something. You might be surprised, you might have everything that you need to get your job done, or it might totally fall flat and not be there for you, which is fine. It's not gonna be for everybody. But I do think that it's something worth trying. And here's my reasoning why. Immutable desktops are not going anywhere. In fact, I think that immutable desktops are going to be the default way of using desktop Linux in the near future. I mean, look at SteamOS. That's running an immutable desktop based on Arch. Uh, look at Fedora Silverblue, Fedora Kinoite. The Fedora Project maintainers have gone on the record saying that that's their vision for the future of the desktop. And even on the server side, things are moving in the direction of, of containerization and immutable operating systems. Because if all you need to do is run a few containers, then you need a very simple, immutable operating system that runs containers. And that's like a really good use case. So all in all, should you use an immutable distribution? 